Hello everybody. I take absolute pleasure in welcoming you all to Gbox family. When I talk about Gbox family, we believe in connecting the world and making the whole world as one family. With this simple but a very strong motto of ours, we traveled to different countries across the globe. We carried out more than 12 years of research and we did a lot of technical research presentations we studied markets we had demonstrations and exhibitions done in different countries like india malaysia uk usa singapore australia thailand etc from these researchers in different countries we found out a lot of factors one such factor which we consider most important is software engineering is like any other discipline of engineering it is like civil engineering electrical engineering automobile engineering production engineering you can guess any engineering and software engineering is like any other engineering in terms of executables in fact when i said this to my own employees in both of my offices here in chennai they were not believing me but this is one factor which was found true having said this there is indeed one difference which makes software engineering stand apart that is in terms of tangibility do you know what i mean by tangible and intangible tangible is something which can be measured directly while intangible is something which cannot be measured directly so software engineering is rather intangible or cannot be measured directly now then how to measure software effort we have to divide the whole process of software engineering into different phases this we define as effort distribution when i talk about effort in software engineering effort is indirectly measured because it is intangible it is indirectly measured by something called as lines of coding roger pressman in his book on software engineering has given a mathematical formula to measure effort he says l equal to e into p cube into t power 4 divided by b power 0.333 this formula has a lot of derivations but at this point of time we need not go in depth into those derivations in addition to this mathematical formula Roger Pressman also gave a model of software development life cycle which he terms as 40 20 40 model. He says 40 percentage of your entire efforts in software should be dedicated towards requirements, analysis of those requirements and designing. 20 percentage should be dedicated towards development and another 40 percentage should be dedicated towards testing. Having said this, according to us any inefficiency in this effort distribution model means non engineering when i talk about non engineering let us again compare software engineering with other disciplines first let us see about other disciplines in other disciplines like civil automobile or electronics engineering any sort of non engineering will result obviously in a flaw these flaws will result in losses which are rather visible directly or can be measured directly suppose take the example of civil engineering what happens when a building is being constructed without proper engineering the building will collapse before your eyes likewise take electronics nowadays you are seeing a lot of mobile phones heating up and failing why is it it's because of non engineering in electronics likewise let us come to software engineering when it is software engineering there is no direct loss because it is rather intangible but having said this indirect losses are really huge what are those indirect losses indirect losses are in terms of profits now because of this non engineering in software what is the most affected phenomena in fact it is the business applications which are the worst affected it can even impact any business because right from a small business to a big business nowadays are using software for improving their productivity 
what happens what is the impact of a failed or a non engineered software on small business the first impact is a product which is rather uncomfortable because when a product is not customized to the requirement of a small business it becomes really uncomfortable for the business owner or the business holder to have the product working effectively for him likewise when he spends a lot of money on the product but the product is not giving him proper outputs what happens it becomes a highly unaffordable thing for him because he is basically a small business finally and most importantly the impact in a negative manner is created in a large scale in non scalability businesses ultimate aim is to make money by scaling itself but here when the software fails it results in a highly non scalable business for the business holder do you think non engineering in software will impact only small businesses definitely not it will impact even the big businesses or the big corporate empires what are all the impact created on big businesses the first and foremost impact is in migration any big business will have a lot of data to deal with when a company has a lot of data it becomes a huge challenge for the company to transfer data from one system to another system now if the new system fails because of non engineering what happens migration becomes a massive failure it takes a lot of time for implementing the project finally because of this the support system or the support management becomes absolutely costly and it results in a huge failure now to substantiate these points let us now take a couple of cases the first case is that of a technology company and the second case is that of an apparel manufacturing company in both these companies what happened both these companies wanted to have a new customized software system and wanted to move away from the existing legacy system they had a software system they had all the data covered in the new software system they expected a lot of benefits and profits from the new software system but what happened it was a huge failure in fact in one of the cases there is of a technology company the company lost more than 100 million dollars which is equivalent to 700 crore indian rupees in sales in addition to this the implementation cost for the software was 400 million dollars is it not a big money 2800 crores wow it's a really a very big money to lose now what is the reason for this failure let us now see pressman's model for these two cases you can see that in both these cases the requirement phase and the effort and requirement phase has decreased to 20 percentage rather than 40 percentage because of that the development and testing phases get rearranged and because of this the requirements were not properly got and the time period of the project totally increased thereby resulting in a loss of huge amounts of money now what is that we see from these two cases what is the impression that is created from these two cases in fact the reason for major failure in both these cases was non engineering when i talk about non engineering you could see that both these business applications were highly non engineered in other words customized approach in engineering which will suit the customer or the requirements of the end user was lacking in both these cases because of that there was a huge failure now let us again rewind back what happens when requirement phase decreases the development phase increases lot of effort has to be put on coding and finally in testing again a lot of work happens and the total model gets rearranged and because of this because of lesser requirement effort the time period of the project increases massively now we have talked about what is non engineering impact of non engineering two cases now what is an engineered software an engineered software is something which can be for 
a small or a big business. In fact, it has to cater to literally every department in the business. Let it be accounts, let it be financial management, let it be a common counter sales, let it be a big CRM, let it be for a small trader or a big manufacturing company and engineered software will suit customizedly to every single organization. Now, let us see what is engineering. According to Wikipedia, engineering is the application of mathematics, scientific, economic and social knowledge to invent, innovate, build or organize things which will ultimately cause the economy to grow. Here, I am relating engineering with economics. Why? Because any product which comes out of proper engineering should contribute to the country's growth in terms of economics. Now let us see what is software engineering. Software engineering is the application of all these engineering principles to design or build different components, to capture requirements from the consumer, assemble their designed components based on the captured requirements and finally integrate those components to make a meaningful and highly engineered and highly useful software product. This is a virtual machine uh, which is called as a component builder in which the requirements are got inside, the coding is done and when testing is done the output which you can see as different blocks are called as components. What is a component? A component can be any individual entity in a big software like room booking in case of hotels, invoicing in case of any accounting software, appointments in case of any hospital management software, payment gateways, everything is a component. Now when two or more components are put together into a single entity, it is called as a module. For example, invoicing, payments, both put together will constitute a module called accounts. Likewise, you can put together any module and a combination of modules gives you a product. Now, like this, you have a lot of components and a lot of modules can be designed based on these components. Now, what is the architecture of an engineered software? An engineered software may be a business application, a support application like an user interface designer, a business processor, a collaborator or a component platform which embeds all the components which we saw in the previous slide just like a master schedule, appointment, harvest plan, journal entries, room booking, receivables, invoicing, many other components but it should be oper operable in any operating system, network, desktop and most importantly mobile phones because today is a smartphone era. This is what we term as an engineered software. Now, according to us, not 40 percentage, 70 percentage of your total effort should be dedicated towards getting requirements, 20 percentage for development and just when you do this, just 10 percentage of your effort will be spared for testing which means you have collected all the requirements in a customized manner thereby saving a lot of time and money. Now we have an engineered software. What next? Will it bring profits or money just like that? Definitely not. Then what next? you need to sell and build. What is a sell and build? Sell and build can be for any firm, right from a very big firm to a very small firm. What to sell? Are you going to sell framework like an ESTJS or an Ajax framework? No. Is it selling some product? No. Is it selling a project? No then what to sell? When I say don't sell a product or don't sell a project, then what is that we should sell? Selling means selling a complete solution. A complete solution is a combination of different packages or products which will contribute 
to the organization in a complete manner. In other words, it has to serve the organization 100 percentage. What is this complete solution? What are the features? A complete solution should have a high level of security. It should be enabled in a smartphone because nowadays smartphones are the most preferred medium for any application. Today companies are finding a lot of issues with taxation. So taxation enabled software will work. Any business has to have a lot of connections to make it a profitable business. So business connectivity has to be enabled in a complete solution. Finally, since we are talking about economics, any event happening on part of the organization will affect economics. So if there is a solution which will show the changes in economics instantly, then it's highly worthy. So economic indicators should be enabled. So what are the disciplines in which this complete solution can be implemented? As I already said, a complete solution which is highly engineered should be implementable in different disciplines. In fact, every discipline of an organization, right from accounts, HR, help desk, sales, financial transactions, customer satisfaction, logistics, production management, everywhere you have to use this complete solution. Whom to sell? Where can you sell? Selling can be done for traders, manufacturers, service people, and in fact, home. Who are those traders? Traders are people who act as middlemen, getting products from a manufacturer and selling it to the end user. Somebody like a shoe merchant, glass merchant, meat merchant, brick merchant, cloth merchant, electronic merchant, cement merchant, paper agencies, every person is a trader. Likewise, what are the service industries? You people would have gone to a lot of auditors, doctors, advocates, hotels, resorts, every single organization or individual who serves or gives intangible products called service-based industries. Manufacturers obviously has a lot of processes which cannot be done manually. Here, a complete solution makes a lot more sense. Let it be automobile manufacturing, pharmaceuticals manufacturing, distilleries, brick manufacturing, glass manufacturing, furniture manufacturing, any manufacturing industry you can take. A complete solution is a worthy solution and it should contribute to the success and profitability of such a manufacturing firm. Now comes the most important constituent, home. Why home is really important? When I talk about business software, where home comes? Because the first target, in fact, to be given preference is home. Why? The whole concept of economics itself started from home. Economics comes from two different terms, ecos and nomos, which means household loss. So when you talk about selling to home, it means you are starting your economics. What is the selling to home? By selling to home, one should be able to manage home and business concurrently. How to do it? Take any home, your home. Your home has your parents who are business employers or employees, consultants may be there, homemakers will be there, students may be there. So if there is a software which will cater to the requirements of home and which can connect home with your business, then it's something really unimaginable but fantastic. So economics evolves from home like this and traverses. From home, it extends to the business, then to the city, then to the state, then to the country. Finally, the whole economic growth of the world can be envisioned in terms of something called as WRP, which is called World Resource Planning. Who can sell? Anybody can sell. Anybody with an MBA degree, engineering degree, master's degree, anybody can sell. Now, what does this selling mean? Does it mean just giving a product and getting money? No. Let us see what Steve Jobs, one of the greatest technocrats the world has ever seen, is saying. He says, get closer than ever to your customers. So close that you tell them what they need well before they realize it themselves. Here, he means that selling is rather getting close to the customers to know what they want 
well before they know what they want that is the trait of a good businessman now coming to build how to build is it using some framework like an ext.js or an ajax framework or a dotnet framework no using components no using graphical user interface tools like illustrator dreamweaver etc no using any case tools which are used in most projects no then what is that we mean by building building basically is to understand the deviations in any given application and finally include those deviations through proper analysis into the application who can do this any android programmer html programmer c programmer ios programmer php programmer jquery programmer dotnet programmer anybody can build now who can sell and build we saw that any mbas engineers masters can sell any android c java etc programmers can build who can sell and build both engineering and mba candidates can sell engineering graduates can build by the way who are those builders builders are basically engineering and mca graduates with smart working skills efficient time management who can adapt to different situations in a faster manner who is having a very good and efficient decision making skill finally a person with an absolutely dynamic thought process which will help him to solve any problem instantaneously without much fuss now anybody wants to become a manager is it not is there anybody who says i just want to be a programmer or a sales person for the entire term of my life no definitely not everybody wants to manage so who can be managers mbas can be managers and even engineering graduates can also become managers when when they have these roles understood they should be able to analyze different scenarios handle different situations in a smart and a quick manner implement the concept of sell and build which will increase the productivity of the individual and then to the company and then finally economy booster product is visualized and the individual acts in a way to boost such an economy <coughs> so software has to be an economy booster let it be a home or a business software it should boost the economy when i talk about economy economics can be envisioned on different scenarios it may be uh, based on wealth distribution based on demand and supply based on prosperity of regions based on gdp based on national income but whatever definition you give for economics finally the ultimate aim is to have high level of profitability and growth so to summarize what did we see in this presentation till now we saw about non engineering cases what happens when non engineering is there what is engineering what is an engineer software product sell and build economics how to contribute to economics and all others there is one product which comes with all these pointers which is our own g box our g box caters to different industrial domains in fact it caters to more than 4000 plus industrial domains which is absolutely a huge number g box is built using a high level of mathematics in terms of its algorithms highly disciplined coding which makes reusability highly possible loosely coupled programmed components which makes reassembling of components in the different modules an easier task now what is that we require from gbox don't you require your outdated cars or motorbikes to be replaced by modern cars yes likewise any old house to be replaced by modern villas yes likewise we at gbox aim at replacing all non engineered software with a highly engineered software of ours which will make the whole world grow so having said this how much is the requirement now you would have understood how many industries we are catering what are all the different engineering methodologies we follow what is the expectation we are having from our product so i leave it to your guess how much manpower we want
Now, how the recruitment is going to happen? It is going to be through the concept of sell and build and the whole recruitment process is going to be through a mobile application built in a customized manner to handle this recruitment process. What is the process? The first step is answering, a quest answering of questions by both engineers and management guys. And when you pass that, you'll be having a virtual workshop in which there'll be different white papers given to you and you have to work on it and get to gain a lot of knowledge. Then you go on a selling mode, you get connected with the customers, you get their requirements, and then you build the components based on their requirements by analyzing different requirements and coming out with a proper framework for building those components. Finally, when you have passed all these four steps, you come to a most important step called team building, which will test your managerial ability in which you having done all the four steps successfully, you build a team under you with uh, people consisting of both programmers and sellers and repeat the sell and build activity through your team. When you do all this, you would be fit into one of these positions. Builder, smart builder, seller, smart seller, manager and a channel partner. Now what is the CTC we offer? For builder and seller we offer 3 lakhs per annum, smart builder and smart seller 5 lakhs per annum, manager 10 lakhs per annum and a channel partner can earn anything more than 10 lakhs per annum. So if you feel that with all these inputs you can fit into a team of high level experts and be a good manager if you think you need to be a part of an economy booster product then mark this date april 10th 2017 is the day when the process begins all over india so we hope that you'll be a part of a team of an efficient economy booster and you would require yourself to be a successful professional over a period of your career with that hope, I thank you all and hope that you all come into a process and become good professionals who will boost the economy of the country. Thank you. All the best.